What is up guys, Lockard here with his Mag Warden build for Clockwork City patch. This is going to be the only one I put out. And I can promise you guys this is the hardest hitting build on a Mag Warden, you'll see. It's been completely min max, other than a few gear pieces not being gold. But other than that, it's completely min max. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. So this is our stats completely unbuffed, give you a second. And then buffed up. 57k max, 2600 spell. All that actually go up. 3000 spell. We have uh, almost a thousand magic recovery, almost a thousand stamina recovery. This is a super le low recovery build, which doesn't really matter because of our bar setup and the sets that we're running. And Mag Warden in general is pretty resourceful. So I am a high elf. You get the most out of the Mag Warden being a high elf because you get the ice passive, you know, elemental damage. Running biceps currently, and we are running the Mage Mundus. All right, now let's hop right into the gear setups. First step, we're running Shackle Breaker. This is on our front and our back bar. We have a Nurnhone trait with a weapon damage enchant on our front bar, and back bar we have a reduced weapon damage enchant, which isn't cooted out. Oh well, and it's also defending. There's a set from unfamiliar. The next set we're running is Necropotence. This is such a good set for a Mag Warden since your Betty Netch will go over in a second, counts as a pet. They did nerf this a little bit, which is alright. Still, probably one of the best sets you can run on your Mag Warden. And then just a filler piece. This is, uh, we're just running IG. This is the only slots we have left is just a uh, one piece monster slot. Uh, you could put in the, uh, the new. Monster set, it gives you the max, match, and stam. I currently don't have the DLC, so I'm not able to get it. So we're running uh, 511. We got heavy on the head, medium on the shoulders, high light body, in pin on the smaller pieces, in fuse on the bigger pieces. Then on our jewelry, well, it's on a Providence, and we have slow damage. Okay, so let's go over some tool tips. So everything fully buffed. Uh, let me give it to the meteor. So you guys want to see the uh, 28k tooltip meteor, right? So there it is, 28k meteor. Um, <laughs> it's pretty fucking insane. This I wouldn't call this a glass cannon build because you are still pretty resourceful. And we'll go over you know, the uh, bar setup. If you guys are having sustain issues, there's so much you can do. You can run Witch Mothers. Luckily, we're running Shackle Breaker, which gives us 2k Stam and Stamina Recovery. So you can get away with, you know, running the, uh, the Bystab Witch Mothers. If you're having more sustain issues, you could toss on, you know, the Atro Mundus instead of the Mage. You'll be missing about 4k Max if you do all that. But I'm going to show you guys, I mean, 4k Max really isn't that big a deal. I mean, I'm just not going to pop my Betty Nest, which is... You know, pretty much 4K. So on tooltip, your shit will look about like this. So that 28K meteor is down to about 25K. It's still pretty respectable, and that's running a super resourceful ability. If, if you do what I just said, you'll have about 1,900 recovery. And in addition, if you really wanted to, you could run the uh, inner light. And so, well, instead of running inner light, you could run. Uh, Ellie drain, but we'll go with it in a minute. So, on our front bar, we're running Bird of Prey. Uh, this is our major endurance and major expedition buff. They've recently buffed this. Uh, I'm not sure which patch, but it used to be a really short duration. You also gain minor berserk. These are three really good passives. I mean, you don't have to keep this up at all times, but it is pretty good to just kind of spam to you know keep your stamina recovery up. And then, of course, when you're going for your burst, you definitely want to have this up. Because that 8% damage means a lot. We have inner light primarily for the crit. The max magic is nice as well. We have force pulse. We need a ability from the destruction staff skill line to get our passive uh, ancient knowledge. Flame staff increases damage single target with 8%. And it's also a really good finisher, kind of like an execute. Because a lot of the times you'll find your opponent super low. You can't spam a Cliff Racer or Deep Fissure to kill him because both of those are delayed abilities. So you need something that's instant. Uh, next, Screaming Cliff Racer. 
Yeah, um, this is pretty much our uh, spam. You know, our, our filler spell. And the further you are away, the more damage it does, up to 15%. T-Fissure, uh, again, this is delayed. It stuns uh, one person, unfortunately, so that sucks. There's only one person. If they could change this around or it'd be stunned, you know, at least three or so, and that, that'd be nice. Sometimes this will hit people as an uh, engine guardian or pets, whatever they have active, and it'll stun them instead of your target, which is pretty unfortunate, but it is what it is. Next, we have Northern Storm. This is primarily to increase our max mage. Um, it's also just a great ability in general, in case you're you know, getting trolled by three or four people, you know, or more, or you have like a night blade or whatever trying to stealth up. You can just pop this, and he's not gonna be able to go stealth. Alternatively, you could run uh, Dawnbreaker on this bar as well, since this class doesn't have a super reliable stun other than Deep Fissure or a Meteor. So a Dawnbreaker, uh, be sure you run Smiting, would be a, a good way to get that. Let me see what Dawnbreaker is on tooltip. Just out of curiosity. Well, shit. Well, it's going to be more than 15k because of buff right now. Do -do. Oh, yeah, so it's going to be 15k Dawnbreaker. It's pretty good for a match class. So, I mean, you're not giving yourself too much damage. Just 8% more max. No big deal. On our back bar, we're running Healing Ward and Harness Magica. Uh, notice we have 21k Harness Magica. That's pretty much more than my Sorcerer's Hardened Ward tooltip. So that's pretty insane. You might be able to get away with running Dampen if you run a more sustainy setup. You know, i.e. the... Uh, which mother's an atro. I haven't really played around too much with that, but if you're having a hard time with stamina classes, that would be definitely the way to go. Next, we're running Blue Betty. Blue Betty is the shit. This is probably my second favorite skill in the game. It gives you our major sorcery buff. In addition, it gives you the... Actually, tooltip will go up a little bit. It's kind of weird how that works. It'll give you... Uh, nine uh, 4,500, you know, every 25 seconds, which every 50 seconds, that's like 8K. So this is pretty much like 9K Magicka over a minute, which is equivalent to a five-piece Warlock proc, which is pretty insane. And then it removes the negative effect, and it's free to cast. So you know, if you're snared, you got some dots on you, especially uh, a Sorcerer's Vicious Curse, you just pop Betty Nedge and it removes it for free cost. So it's pretty insane ability. My absolute favorite ability, however, is Fetch or Infection. This is the hardest hitting dot in the game by far. Uh, with everything completely unbuffed, this is a 33k dot. You know, every other cast is. Yeah, of course, my controller would short out. But uh, if we fully buff this bitch. Uh, actually, let me. Uh, so it'll be accurate because you're going to apply it on your back bar, but you're ultimately going to be on your front bar when you use it. So, everything fully buffed. Uh, it's a 30k tooltip. Take half of that add to it. That's a 45k dot over the course of 10 seconds. So this is by far the hardest thing to do. It applies a lot of pressure. Even when you're stuck in your back bar from like a magic DK or whatever, this shit hits hard. In open world, however... You wouldn't run Fetcher Infection. It's too situational. This is only for dueling. You would run something along the lines of something from the green tree, maybe Living Vines, throw that morph is, and Lotus Blossom. Okay, so moving on. Next ability is Ice Fortress. This gives us our uh, major resolve and uh, major ward. And this also gives us minor protection, reducing your damage by 8%. I don't see why you wouldn't run this. I see a lot of wards not running it. I just don't see why you wouldn't. Last but certainly not least is our Ice Comet you guys saw before. This is a 28k tooltip meteor. And keep in mind, the setup I'm showing you right now is strictly for dueling. So don't try to run this setup in open world. You will get shit on. You will have no magicka in like 30 seconds. So just keep that in mind, guys. So let's go over uh, some of the passives. They're uh, pretty important to note. Um, advanced species you know, increases your... Damage two percent reach animal companion ability. That's why we have bird prey on our front bar. So effectively, this is six percent extra damage. Um, be sure to have a pet on both bars. 
you know, one of these animal companions are both larger, so you maintain this passive. Savage Beast, I mean, this is, this will pretty much be getting this off cooldown. And Bomb with Nature, uh, this actually heals you when you spam your Cliff Racer. This heals you. Or if you spam Betty Nets, which is free to cost, it also heals you. It's pretty nice. Green Balance, um, as far as our dueling builds concerned, we don't use any of these passes because we're not using any of these abilities. But if you are in open world, I would suggest running Lotus Blossom in place of the Fetcher Infection. Just so you can get these passes. Nature's Gift is really good. The, this is effectively 500 recovery to something. So it's giving you 250 Magicka or Stamina Restore on your lowest pull every one second. You know, and recovery is defined as per two seconds. So this would be effectively you know, 500 recovery to something, whether it be your magic or Stamina. I mean, if you do want to play a more conservative build, you could definitely uh, take off Inner Light. You know, if you are having sustain issues, as, as far as the dueling builds concerned, you could take off Inner Light and toss on maybe Lotus Blossom. Lotus Blossom is really great because it gives you the crit, so the only thing you're missing out on would be the 5% max. So just keep that in mind. But this is just the setup I'm running for now. You guys can change it however you want. Just some food for thought. Then Winter's Embrace. Um, most of these are kind of useless. Piercing Cold's a must. Um, Frozen Armor's uh, okay. I mean, these are pretty much useless. Except Piercing Cold. Yeah. Okay. So, Destruction Staff skill lines. Um, the one you definitely need is Ancient Knowledge. The rest of them are kind of, you know, arbitrary. You don't have a lot of skill points, but try to get them all if you can. Restor Restoration Staff. Of course you need Healing Ward. And Restoration Master if you can. Absorb is really nice. Psycho Life is really good. Too. Actually, all these are fucking good. Try to have all these. <laughs> Light Armor. Have all those passives. Medium Armor. Wind Walker and Athletics if you have the skill points. Heavy Armor, definitely Juggernaut to increase your health more. Um, as our health currently sits, it's at like 22k, something like that. But we're also going to have Minor Endurance up you know, when we heal. So this one put our health up to about 25k. So we're pretty tanky. Fighter's Guild, I mean, unless you're running Dawnbreaker, I won't worry about these passives. If you are running Dawnbreaker, Slot Skill Tracker. Mage's Guild, Ice Common, Inner Light, of course. The only thing I have slot right now is a Magic Controller. We don't need the rest of them. They're all kind of, you know, we're just using the, the Meteor anyway. Undaunted, definitely gonna have Undaunted Metal. Soul, if you're open world, have all these. Support, don't need them. High off, passive, try to have all these. And alchemy, definitely need medicinal use. Now, I've not really had any issues with stamina builds, so we'll go over the CP setup. So as of right now, it is geared toward countering Magicka classes. But uh, you guys can change it however you want. But I am super happy with the blue tree. Um, it's pretty much optimal in my opinion. So we'll go over that one real fast. 72 Elfborn, 28 Spell Erosion, 64 Ellie Expert, 66 Master at Arms. Pretty much content with this. You could possibly take some points out of Elfborn. It's also in a Staff Expert or something, but I really like the really high crits. Next is Red Tree, 72 Ironclad, 12 Spell Shield, 8 Resistance to get that juicy soft cap at 1200 crit resist. 43 in Ellie Defender, 23 in Thick Skin. I would keep the 23 in Thick Skin and divide Ellie Defender up into these two trees. But as of right now, I have 10% in Ellie Defender. Then 72 Bastion. Since rewards are super thick, why don't I make them thicker? Alright. 72 in the Warlord. This patch, I don't find myself roll dodging a lot. You get in trouble with all the uh, abilities that actually hit you through roll dodge. Uh, Leap. Killer's Blade. In cap sometimes does. Dawnbreaker. So you're better off just blocking, in my opinion. Unless you're in open world, then roll dodging is always nice. Running a super, super low recap build, so these points may or may not be wasted. Low 10%, 9% is really not going to matter. But you can kind of toss these around where you want. I found this works best. And of course, the 1% in tenacity. Got 2 in Tumbling for the 1%, and then 72 in Shadow Ward. Blocking, like I said before. 
and that's pretty much the build, guys. Um, I mean, I'll slot wish mothers, you know, just kind of show you that the recovery is not too ass, you know. I mean, that's 1400. I mean, that's respectable, and plus a buddy nudge, plus you'll have atro. Then, if you're really having sustained issues, like I said, just take off inner light and put on Ellie Drain, which effectively gives you 600 magic recovery. And then, if you're having super hard issues sustaining, right, you can just slot a, uh, maybe instead of Fexture Infection and play more defensive, you can slot a Green Balance Tree. And you saw from the passives that these give you a 250 magic or stam, depending on which one of your resources pulls are lower every second. So it's entirely up to you guys. All right, so that is my Magic War build, guys. I really don't have a build name for it. Call it Absolute Zero, you know, something cringy like that. So um, hope you guys have really good holidays. This will be the last build video for a while. I'm trying to enjoy some time with the family. I suggest you guys do the same. They're not going to be around forever. So just have a good time. Enjoy your all's break, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.